Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast, post-Thanksgiving edition, at least when we're recording. It should be publishing sometime in December. I'm your host, your happy host, your grateful host, Kevin. Today, I have the honor of interviewing Alan Heyman. Alan has a knack for coaching fellow introverts, which appeals to me greatly, helping them find their superpowers in an extroverted world. He also specializes in coaching through transitions. To date, Alan has coached leaders who were born in 26 different countries and work on five continents which if you're keeping track, that's most of them. Alan is also the author of the book, Don't Just Have the Soup, which is a great title, by the way. Alan, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you so much, Kevin. It's a pleasure to spend some time with you and your audience today. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a self-identified introvert, although I've had to spend a good chunk of my life acquiring the skills of extroversion and also building like the battery storage for extroversion. It's not just about knowing how to do it, it's about making sure you have the reserves at the right time in the right way. It's all, it's all been very fascinating to learn more about as I've, I've grown into myself while also acquiring the skills that I need to be a little bit more dimensional than just, you know, a guy down in his office clicking away at a computer. <laughs> Sounds really familiar. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me, let me, I like to ask this question sort of like cheekily. What is your superhero origin story as a coach? And to, to like, to, to put it a different way, it's like, how did you first realize or discover, or you were told maybe that coaching is what you maybe already are doing, or you just have a knack for it, or it's like, how did you basically find out that that's what you were and also wanted to do like for a living? And how did you kind of fold that discovery into the business you have today? I think the short answer, Kevin, is that I lived it before I did it. So going back at this point, about nine years, I hired a coach as part of my own leadership development journey not having known beforehand what a coach was or why coaching might matter to me. And I could spend many half hours talking about that journey. But the long and the short of it is that it had a transformative impact on my own career. And that's when I understood what the power of coaching was. So reconnected with that coach one more time on something very specific, but never lost the message of here's a methodology that can really create a lot of change and have a lot of impact for people. So the more I learned about it, the more I studied up on it, the more I realized it pulls together aspects of elements of things that I've been enjoying doing throughout my entire career, whether it's helping people tell their stories as a journalist to helping to develop, you know, younger and emerging leaders as a leader myself, wanted to explore the possibility of doing this actually for a living, went to coaching school, got a certificate and was faced with a choice ultimately. Do I want to try to keep folding this in under my umbrella of existing responsibilities in a job within an organization, which was working to a point, or do I want to do it as much as I feel comfortable with the people that I'd like to, you know, explore doing it with? And that's ultimately the path that I chose. So November 2019, November 1st, actually, was my last day of my last full time job. And that is when I walked out into the bright afternoon sunlight in Washington, D.C. and came home. And I have been working from my house for myself ever since. First of all, great timing. <laughs> I myself made a similar move and started the the process of becoming like who I am today as like a marketer and a podcaster and sort of like a coach for coaches. It started, yeah, it was in mid to late November of 2019 was when the process got started. And I was connecting with a firm and like really starting to pursue stuff. And then, yeah, made the made the official full-time jump in, in spring of 2020. Oh, that, wow. That is that, timing that, right there. Yes. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, there's, some, there's something to be said for that. And there's something to be said for doing it like the way that you did it. Like you just really identified all these attributes of what you felt like was going to be your your most well-lived life. And, and that includes what's going to satisfy you, but is largely driven by how you can best serve. I could say in everything that you were communicating, it's like, where, where can I do the most? How can I have the most impact? Where can I serve the most? How can I put the most of my attributes, my virtues, these things that I've acquired through my life into play in a way that's going to make a positive impact. And then you, I just love, it's, it's, it's so common. Like pretty much every coach has their unique version of that beginning, that origin story. I always love hearing it because it's always just, it's slightly different, but they always arrive at that same conclusion where it's like, how can I, as who I am, identifying who you are as a person, what you have to offer, how can I best contribute, have an impact, serve, and then just pursuing that question to its logical and sometimes illogical, but very profound conclusions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's a journey of intention is what it is. And mm. I've had career moves in my own life that were maybe less intentional than this move was in that oftentimes I would find success and that somebody I respected, whether it's a friend or a boss or a former boss says, Hey, there's this thing that I think you'd be good at. You should try it. 
And I'll think, hmm, yeah, I could probably do that thing. Let me give it a try. And I've meandered from opportunity to opportunity like that almost through my entire career with, with you know, success and satisfaction and impact. This is a little different in that I discovered something along the way and I said, I want that. I would like to do this. And I'm, I'm chasing it down now. And that's, that's my own journey as opposed to a journey that maybe was suggested by somebody else. And that's... That's a very, I think for a lot of people, that's a very subtle but powerful difference in what people maybe think about what coaching can provide. A lot of people think of coaching as like, as guidance, and that's largely what it is. But I feel like there's a, there's an often unspoken attribute where you, you don't have to be desperate to really have a life-changing experience with a coach. You don't have to just be like on the ragged edge of dissatisfaction or burnout. Like, obviously, a coach can come in and perform miracles of triage and really like flip a life around. But there's also those like where you're just like doing what you could, what what seems sensible, taking the opportunities as they present themselves. But something I've found that a coach can be really powerful at helping you formulate and really sharpen is that intention, that focus, that ability to see not just the opportunities that are available, but determine for yourself, make a selection choice, decide which ones you want to pursue or which ones you respond to the most strongly. And then figuring out how to listen to that voice, how to like find that voice, find that out listen to it, and then how to take those first couple of steps. I find that that is an often overlooked, but extremely powerful aspect of good coaching. Yeah, absolutely. It's breaking out of the frame. It's, you know, to, to whose standards am I, am I living? And mm -hmm. whose expectations am I serving? And whose needs am I attending to? Must that always be the case? Or, or can I zoom out a little bit? Can I take a different perspective on the situation and figure out, you know, exactly as you said it, what is my intention here? What do I want? And what can I put forth into the world? Well, let's, let's bring things. I, I, I could stay on the conceptual for like you're talking about for like in the story, the origin story, and then the conceptual stuff, many, 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 many half hours I could spend on that. But I want to bring things, bring things up to the present and also get into a little, little bit of like nuts and bolts, get down to brass tacks regarding your, your coaching practice. Sure. It's another kind of like cheeky two-parter that I like to ask almost like an interrogation. Who do you coach and how do you coach them? Sort of like, Hey, like, what did you know? And when did you know it? Absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah. The who, the, obviously the who, like who you tend to focus on, what stages of their professional or personal life you tend to engage with them at, and the how being like one-to-one, -one, or obviously you've written a book, so that's a, a, certainly an arm of your coaching, coursework, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, who do you coach, and how do you coach them? Absolutely. So you mentioned in the intro, and I've had the great pleasure of coaching across a number of different nationalities and industries, and really I have coached people from individual contributor on up to the heads of very large organizations, and typically there's there's a hunger for change there's a desire to make some sort of a pivot or a transition or they've recently done one or they've realized that they've reached the end of what they can accomplish on their own and they need a thought partner they need a sounding board to kind of go along with them for a little while and help you know help them get their thoughts organized and sorted out i also work pretty extensively with and for other coaches because there's a project that needs five coaches and they're only one person kind of situation or referrals and i do a fair amount of contract coaching as well for larger coaching organizations that have big institutional clients and do the matching up for us as the coaches so i've I've had the great pleasure of being able to reach into a number of different industries that way that I'm not connected to personally as a primarily nonprofit and government guy here on the East Coast of the US. So the common denominator there is, is actually difference. The common denominator is folks are coming in the door with all manner of different situations that they're presenting and at all manner of stages in their career and at all manner of levels of readiness for coaching actually. And so what's interesting to me about this is that you don't need to have the exact right moment to find inspiration, to find insight, to find even something that can be magical or transformative. It can come in a corporate sponsored coaching engagement where somebody has bought a seat for their employee and dropped them in it without explanation. That happens. <laughs> or it can be somebody who's been thinking about making the investment themselves directly for quite a bit of time, and they've decided this is the right moment. So I've been able to help clients achieve transformation in both scenarios and everything in between. The fellow introvert piece tends to be a common denominator among many, but not all of the people that I'm coaching. And I have noticed that from time to time, somebody sees the profile and they think to themselves, that's the exact opposite of who I am. And I need that divergent perspective in my life. So I'm going to hire that guy as my coach. Doesn't happen very often. When it does, <laughs> it's fascinating. I love that kind of work. Uh, so I, I think in a roundabout way, I've, I've given you a pretty broad answer to your, your pretty, pretty simple question. 
No, that's that, that's that's lovely, and I love I love how you your focus is a matter of where you choose to place your focus. Where it's like you definitely you state your like how you're coming into the frame. Where it's just like I, you know you have this this book that you've written. You have this like identification as like an introvert, clearly very skilled at communication and interaction. And I love that like basically, even though you are not even though because you are very specific in your focus, you are also very adaptable in the way that you can engage as a coach. Which is exactly, I mean, it's one of, one of the most pillars of coaching is that ability to come in and just sort of like have a conversation, start the relationship. And a coach can see, obviously sense, but also like see and be able to communicate immediately. Where's our bridge points? It's like, I, I can I can tell where we're going to connect, where you need me to connect with you, where maybe you need to connect with me, what you're here for, how I can serve. And it just kind of, with those reps, with that practice, with that intention, it just starts to like become very apparent. It's it's really like it's I get chills kind of talking about it because it's really like a magical feeling when you're first like meeting someone that you're coaching or meeting someone who's going to coach you, and you can feel those little connections start to form so early in the process, and you can feel like I mean I'm making it sound a little bit romanticized, but almost like this electricity it starts to like pass through this current starts to pass through as you start your your connections start to touch. It's yeah. just really it's I'm always so fascinated by it, and I love that your your approach brings you such a diverse client base i feel like that's just that speaks to that speaks to coaching in general and you as a coach specifically i, I think so too and it, it's it's been a journey because <clears throat> excuse me i think the temptation is to set out from day one and create your ideal client persona and just go after that and many coaches do it brilliantly i'm more of an experiential guy i tend to figure out what i like and what works best by doing it and having it either not work or having it work really well and so far that seems to be working. And I'm mindful of the fact that you also asked me a question about how, and I forgot, but I remembered. <laughs> and what I like to say is, is this, and I actually came up with this, this answer when I had a client, a prospective client ask me point blank during a, you know, one of these discovery calls, why shouldn't I just do this myself? Why shouldn't I just get some books? Why shouldn't I just, you know, take a LinkedIn learning class and, and take charge of my own leadership development? I said, you can. It's, it's very possible. Lots of people do it. Tens of thousands of books. If you look at your favorite, you know, online bookseller on, on leadership, what I tend to offer are four advantages to what I would call the potted plant in this seat, just, you know, doing it yourself, looking, looking at, you know, an inanimate object. One is reframing. We've talked about this already today during our uh, conversation where the ability to zoom out, look at something upside down, backwards, sideways, because I'm not in it is extremely valuable to my clients. And this is sometimes all they need to do to be able to move past the obstacle or whatever it is that's holding them up is just see it a little bit differently. The second is curation of resources. I was a journalism major and a communications person before becoming a coach, which means I'm an expert in exactly nothing. And <laughs> I love being a generalist. I've built a career on it. But what it also means is that my clients are often looking for someone who is the expert on that thing. It's time management, it's delegation, it's presence, whatever that is. I have a library of books and TED Talks and videos and things like that that I'll suggest. It's all optional. There's no curriculum. Nobody has to read the stuff. A lot of my clients find it helpful, so they don't have to go looking for all those things on their own. The third piece is accountability, and you know this probably from some of your own work, in that people are going to make commitments, and they're going to be more likely to keep those commitments if a third party will ask them about the commitment later. So if you tell me that the way you're going to try to get unstuck is to have five networking conversations with people you've never met before in the next two weeks, I'm going to ask you about that. You're probably more likely to do it than if you just make a list by yourself and decide to do it yourself. And the last piece is what I call the balance between support and challenge. So leadership is hard. It's one of the hardest things that people can do. And I believe that because I've lived it. And I also believe that because it's the work that I do. I wouldn't have anything to talk to people about if it weren't true. So you got to support your clients. You got to be in their corner. You got to be their ally and you have to be in service to them. As we spoke about earlier, at the same time, there's a leadership bubble and we are human beings and power does interesting things to people. And the mm -hmm. higher up we climb, the more we are surrounded by folks who tell us the things that they think we want to hear. Not because we're bad people, but it's just something that happens. So I am your independent third party. I am your ally and your advocate who will be in your corner and who will tell you if something doesn't make sense or if it sounds like a lousy excuse or if the body language doesn't match the words. And I can do this in a supportive way and still keep my marriage and still keep my house and still keep my job in contrast to a lot of the people who may not be part of the, you know, the, the, the small group of folks who challenge a leader on a regular basis. So being part of what Adam Grant calls the challenge network uh, is, is part of that fourth piece that I offer all of my clients. Once again, 
I'm finding multiple 30 minute blocks of time to discuss each of those four, but I'm, I'm very drawn to that, that idea of a coach. I've, I've been like new, like I say it in different ways, but I, I've recently referred to it as the familiar stranger. Kind of mm. like referencing how sometimes you can have those conversations with someone who you barely know or just met. And you're like, you're, you're shocked at all the different deep, deep places you're able to go and that they go with you in these conversations. And that's because some conversations, sometimes some moments require a tremendous distance in order for you to feel safe enough to communicate in that way. And yet you also need someone who is close enough to you for that communication to really make a difference in your life. It's not just a distant dumping ground. It's just basically the best of both worlds, a familiar stranger. And that's, I feel like that's what a coach is so perfectly positioned for that. Because again, I care about you, not just like in a way that like, I don't want to have like wellspring in my heart. I do have, I care about you, but also I know how to care in the way that you need to be cared for right now. Mm -hmm. I know how to open myself up. I know how to be present for you. I can give you the thing. I can tell you the things you need to hear. I can tell you the things you don't want to hear. I can tell you the things you want to hear, but are afraid to ask for and everything in between. And just like a coach coming in with all of the care and skill and positioning of a friend and all of the skills and experience and positioning of someone whose job it is to come in and help you. It's like, it's really the perfect blending of both a complete stranger and a trusted friend, a trusted confidant. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a classic polarity the way that you set it up and you don't wanna to get too close because yeah. you're not gonna coach your family members. You're not gonna coach your you know your partner, your spouse, you know the person who's lived next door to you for 20 years. That, that's too close. Yeah. Get too far away and you're just, you're detached and you don't have the connection there that's necessary to be able to be effective. Man, I'm like, I'm, I'm eyeballing the, the Zoom clock and I'm like, I don't, I wanna, I just wanna keep going. I wanna chew up the rest of my morning with this conversation, but. <laughs> Before I let you go and immediately slide into your LinkedIn DMs to schedule a part two, because I would love <laughs> to continue conversations like this. I just, I love this kind of stuff. I love, yeah. I feel like more and more people just need to hear all about this. I mean, it feels like it's a little inside baseball, like nuts and bolts behind the curtain, but it's all really just like up front and out there. And I feel like more and more people are aware of the power of coaching, the importance of coaching in like, in, not just in their professional life, but just all across all, all manner of aspects of living. And I feel like there's just like a rising tide of awareness as well as a rising tide of willingness, which is, I, I'm just really, I, I get really excited just being a part of it. And we start talking about this kind of stuff and I'm like, this is great. Everybody I know needs to hear this. <laughs> yeah, I definitely so, get the the energy around it. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it surrounds you. Yeah, it really does. It buoys you. Even 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 when you haven't had your first cup of coffee, you're I'm I'm, I'm waking up like I'm bleary eyed and energized somehow. <laughs> yes, yes. But before I let you go, and I will let you go here in a moment, but I want to give you an opportunity to and this is another one of my little two parters. I like to I like to I like to I like the duality. Where can people find out more about you? Just kind of in a general like what you do, how you do it, just learn more about your business, your coaching. And also where can people best connect with you? Do you have like a preferred way for people to reach out, a preferred social media that you're really active on that people can come and connect with you there? So yeah, where can people find out more and where can people connect? Absolutely. Appreciate the question. So my website is peacefuldirection.com. That has biography. You know, I always publish the the details of my coaching packages and my rates right there on the web. So there's no mystery surrounding that. I'm very open about those things. I have a blog uh, there and some video resources and a free resource library about leadership that's open for the taking. Uh, as far as where to connect, that's a good place. I've got a contact form. I'm also pretty active on LinkedIn. It is at the moment the only social platform that I use, and it fits me fairly well as compared to some of the others that either never did or don't anymore. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of my digital happy place for connecting with folks and keeping an eye on what my colleagues and people that I've worked with in the past are doing these days. Yeah, it's certainly a far cry from the old the old resume on steroids that it used to be. Not even just I mean, even just like a few years ago, it was at least considered that. It's really become quite a quite a lovely platform to like legitimately engage and like build relationships. I didn't I don't think I ever expected that out of LinkedIn, but it certainly has it, it's become my like my my go to social media platform these days. At least yeah, at least we're like Networking what? for introverts, you know, is, is it, it's far less awkward than wandering around the cocktail party with business cards in one hand and a beverage in the other. Oh, man, I do not miss those days. <laughs> I do not either. We never go back, perhaps. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and let you go, even though I desperately don't want to, because we've had such a great conversation. I am going to invite you back on for a part two, because I like not only do I like selfishly just get a lot out of these conversations and enjoy them greatly. I just like exposing more people to more ideas and concepts about coaching that when, when you hear them spoken out loud, it's like, oh, that makes sense. It's like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. You're really having your mind blown 
by something in a coaching conversation. And yet <laughs> you might be having your, your heart blown, your life completely blown in the right direction by a coaching conversation. Cause all this like well-phrased, well-presented timely, more than just a potted plant level common sense. It just, it makes such a difference just to hear it as a third party and then to engage with it as a coachee or as a coach. I just, I'm in, I'm in love with the entire process. So I'm definitely going to have you back on and we'll have another celebratory conversation about some aspect of one of the many, many things we talked about today. <laughs> Sounds awesome. And so going back to what I said earlier about commitments, I'm committing to you and to your audience that I will be back for another one. Yes, I love it. I put you on the hook. Yes. <laughs> well, Alan, this has been truly fantastic. To the audience out there, do yourself a favor. Just reach out and find out more. Go to his website, find out, grab those resources. I've, I've only like very briefly browsed through them. He has a lot to offer. And also, as you could tell, he's lovely to talk with. So reach out if you think you guys can be of any service to each other. And thank you for listening. Alan, thank you for being on. Talk to you again soon. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kevin.